Hello and welcome to Spirit with a Vision's Indian Hemp Project. This is Joseph Bukowski. I'll be guiding you through this presentation. First off, a quote from George Washington. Make use of the Indian hemp seed and sow it everywhere. Obviously, he was a lover of the Indian hemp seed and Indian hemp. What is Spirit with a Vision? S-W-A-V, Spirit with a Vision. For all people, formulated to induce the doctrines found in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Here's a little experience and resume from Thomas Wasson, the first member of Spirit with a Vision. He was awarded a $1 check from the government after finding the United States government guilty on 23 counts of wrongful arrest. Now, the government attempted to offer Tom $5,000 for him to drop the charges, but he did not drop the charges. He proceeded on to find the government guilty of 23 counts of wrongful arrest and was only awarded this $1 from the United States Treasury. Here is a piece of refused mail <clears throat> that Thomas sent out, that he sent out when he was uh, chairman of the Winnemucca Indian Colony to Senator Ben N. Campbell, and he did not want to ha have anything to do with any type of relations with them, so obviously he refused their mail. Here is a letter from the United States Department of State inviting him to the assembly during the International Decade of the World's Indigenous People, which was December 5th, 1995, and was through the years 1994 and 2004, during which time he helped draft the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, as you can see by this document. It wasn't until about 2007 that the United States became a signer on the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. And these following UNDRIP articles pertain to this art presentation, UNDRIP being United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Here is Article 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Article 11 and 12. 20, 21, and 24 the articles from UNDRIP. And here's a big one for SUAVE, Article 31. Indigenous peoples have the right to maintain, control, protect, and develop their cultural heritage, traditional knowledge, and traditional cultural expressions, as well as the manifestations of their sciences, <clears throat> technologies, and cultures, including human and genetic resources, seeds, medicines, knowledge of the properties of fauna and flora, oral traditions, literatures, designs, sports, and traditional games, and visual and performing arts. They also have the right to maintain, control, protect, and develop their intellectual property over such cultural heritage, traditional knowledge, and traditional cultural expressions. And then also back there was Article 33. Here is some more um, resume and experience of him. You can read it. Winnemucca Indian Colony, U.S. Supreme Court. He helped the Winnemucca Indian Colony reach a favorable decision from the United States Supreme Court. Here he is at the Divine Strike in which a missile was stopped from being tested near Indian lands in Nevada. And here is the second of three original members of SWAV, Roger Gifford. Now, Roger Gifford has a video out there on, in which he got all of his property back that the government had came in and stolen from him. And there will be a link, actually, that you'll be able to click right now to go and see that video. The third member wishes to be social media anonymous. Now... This is just my opinion, but why did the U.S. federal government issue a memo recognizing tribes' rights to cultivate and sell cannabis? Well, obviously tribes have always had that right, but with the economic downturn that happened around 2008, I think that the uh, United States government was looking for a quick booster shot in the arm in the economy. So thus, they gave the tribes, you know, they notified them that they have these rights which they always have had now here is an article this this one was will be big like it says this talks about the tribes and cannabis issues and and uh, policy right now 
And according, here it is, I highlighted it so you can read along. According to the Department of Justice, it will no longer prosecute federal laws regulating the growing or selling of marijuana on reservations even when state law bans this. Now also, I understand that some tribes are very concerned with public safety implications such as the impact on youth and the use of tribal lands for the cultivation or transport of marijuana. Now I would like to introduce you to hemp, <clears throat> one of the most useful plants on the planet. Now it was mandated by law to grow hemp in the United States colonies Virginia, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. In, 19, in 1839, the Navy's showcase rope walk in Charleston, Massachusetts used 2,733 tons of hemp. And hemp was also grown from Missouri to California during the 1800s. Now what is hemp? Well this right here is a picture of hemp stock in which fiber can be stripped from the stock and be used for clothing, uh, medicine, rope, and many other uses. Right here are hemp seeds, a very nutritious source of protein and a very good food, among other uses as well. Now, the next few slides will be variations of hemp hull for the most part. Right here is some hemp hull being processed for different uses. It could be used for food, or medicine, clothes, like I said, rope. Right here is a, a refined type of hemp it's referred or called hash here's some more hemp hull in various stages of uh, produce here's the hemp hull after it's been um, sifted through for seed right here's a uh, hemp or marijuana cannabis what you want to call it leaf uh, the purple in the plant signifies that it's antioxidant properties to detoxify the body of unnatural chemicals just like this plant right here and these plants in the back. Now you'll notice hemp's apparent resemblance to cannabis, sativa, and indica. That's because they are the same thing. Just as this picture shows, that right there you can call it what you want to call it, but we, we refer to it in this presentation as Indian hemp. Some more of it. Now it's important to recognize that since the founding of this country, even before George Washington, when pilgrims first came over here around that time, hemp was associated with the Native American or Indian peoples already existing on this continent of America. Here's some more pictures of uh, hemp flowers. Here's a big field of Indian hemp. Now what Suave would like to do is get together a consortium of tribes to help blaze the trails and uh, figure out what type of policies are going to be in effect of all parties that want to be in this or are affected by this so everybody has an input and can come to a consensus type of decision on how we should go forward with this policy now we can operate on both a profit or non-profit basis and for this presentation and for the Indian Hemp Project we are leaving that up to the individual tribes to decide whether or not they would like to offer a prof profit motive type of policy or a non-profit type of uh, way to go about this. Thank you so much.